cilia trunk. It is a short white vessel that is 1.25 cm long. It is 1.25 cm long which arises from the front of the abdominal iota. This is the abdominal this abdominal iota. It comes from the intervertebral disc between T12 and L1 vertebrae. T12 and L1 vertebrae. It runs forward in somewhat to the right and immediately divides into the following three branches. Its branches. The first branch, it is the smallest left gastric artery. And second branch is the common hepatic. And the third branch is the important one, splenic. Now, coming to the left gastric artery. It passes upwards and to the left, it reaches the cardiac end of the stomach and it runs downwards towards the lesser curvature, cardiac end and the lesser curvature and lesser curvature of stomach. This is the left gastric artery. It gives esophageal branches and the small gastric branches along the stomach. Okay. Now coming to the common hepatic artery. This is the common hepatic artery. Coming to the common hepatic artery, it is larger than the left gastric artery. It runs downwards and towards the right side to reach the upper surface of the first part of duodenum. And then it gives rise to three branches. The three branches. of common hepatic artery the first branch is gastroduodenal artery second branch is the right gastric and the third branch is hepatic artery or the common hepatic, I mean the hepatic artery proper. So this is the right gastric artery, this is the gastroduodenal and this is the hepatic artery. This is the hepatic artery proper. This is the right gastric artery and gastroduodenal artery. Coming to the gastroduodenal artery, it arises from the upper border of the first part of the duodenum. It runs downwards behind the duodenum and terminates at the lower border by dividing it itself into right gastroepiploic 
and superior pancreo pancreatic duodenal arteries. This is the right gastroepiploic artery and the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. Coming to the right gastric artery, it arises distal to the origin of gastroduodenal artery. It turns towards the left and runs upwards the lesser curvature of the stomach. Coming to the hepatic artery proper, it is a continuation of the common hepatic artery. It gives rise to right, right hepatic and the left hepatic arteries. Those supply the gallbladder. Now coming to the third part of the celiac trunk, that is the splenic artery. It is the largest branch. So this is the splenic artery. It is the tortuous branch which runs horizontally to the left along the upper border of the body and tail of the pancreas which divides into five terminal branches and supply the spleen. By five terminal branches. It, the splenic artery in additional to the terminal segmental branches, it gives off the following branches. So, three branches of splenic artery. The first one is the pancreatic branches. Second one is a short gastric artery. And the third one is the left gastroepiploic. Coming to the pancreatic branches. This one is the dorsal pancreatic branch of artery and the great pancreatic artery so this one is the great pancreatic artery and the last one is the inferior pancreatic artery so this is the inferior pancreatic artery the great pancreatic artery is also called as um, arteria pancreatica magna arteria pancreatica magna in the dorsal pancreatic artery arises near the splenic artery and the great pancreatic artery or the arteria pancreatica magna which enters the body of pancreas runs along the main pancreatic duct and these are the caudal branches caudal pancreatic branches which which together forms the inferior pancreatic artery. Coming to the short gastric arteries, these are the short gastric arteries. These are 3 to 7 in number, 3 to 7. They arise from the terminal part of the splenic artery and supply the fundus of the stomach. It supplies the fundus. Coming to the left gastroepiploic artery. So, this is the left 
gastro epiploic it arises from the terminal part of the splenic artery near the hilum of the spleen and it runs along the greater curvature of the stomach and terminates by anastomosing with the right gastroepiploic artery the right gastroepiploic artery anastomoses with the left gastroepiploic artery this completes the celiac trunk